Hey, what's up, my Dragon Legion? How y'all been? Shadow Dragoons. Today we're gonna be doing a Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile of my current Red Eyes deck for March 2016. Now, as you Dragoons know, I I have already done a deck profile on this deck about two months ago. But ever since Bosch came around the corner, I decided to make a couple of changes with the deck. And uh, while I am aware this deck is definitely not gonna be nowhere near as top tier material for competitive reasons, it's still a very fun deck to play for both competitive and even casual casual reasons now and then. And usually I have lots of fun with this deck deck regardless of what of what kind of playstyle I want to play with this deck and such. Now not only I made a couple of changes with the deck ever since Bosch came around, but ever right before Bosch came, there were a couple of problems I had with the deck in the past that I kinda didn't really like too much much and I decided, decided and just the other day I tore apart this deck and rebuild this deck into a much different and more efficient deck than it was much before. Now there is still some room for improvement, but it's definitely a lot better build than my recent previous build. At least that's how I feel view it right now at the moment. Uh, just like my recent Disaster Dragon deck, Dragon Deck profile I did recently, I also made there were, I also uh, proxied and borrowed uh, some of my friends' and Psalm Strikes at the time during that one recent weekend. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me. Uh, at, my, at my locals for allowing me to borrow your Solemn Strikes at the time. It means a lot to me. Uh, however, I am hearing a lot of rumors that Solemn Strike is going to go to 1. Will it happen? We're not too sure. Anything could happen on the next upcoming ban list. But nonetheless, this is what I've been currently messing around with up till the new ban list and such. And until the new ban list comes, this will be what the build will be for, for, for a little bit while. And depending what the new ban list says, I will be making some couple of changes here and there. Depending what the ban list says. Uh, for those of you who are just here, the net deck, I left the deck list in the description down below. For those who want to see the deck list right there without looking through the entire whole, the whole entire video, I only ask that you leave a like, you drop a like, like right before you leave the video, before you leave on your way. So, with that being said, let's move on straight to the deck profile right now. Shadow Dragoons. All right, start off the monster lineup. Let's get the vanillas out of the way. Start off with obviously the three red eyes black dragons and the two red eyes. Black Flare Dragons. Uh, this is pretty much still a typical standard, and uh, most disaster drags, not disaster, pardon me, most rise decks, far, far as I know. Now, I have noticed that in other people's dip builds, I've noticed that people are playing three of these guys, which is, which honestly is actually not a bad idea. Now, the reason why I'm not doing this is because my build right here is focused on rank seven C's build plays, while also still being able to drop that red uh, Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. Now, playing three of these guys, in my opinion, is better off doing that when you're playing a straight-up dedicated rank seven build, when you have no, when you have no interest at all of playing the fusion build, and and I'll build as well. So that's so as long as you're doing that, you're better off just playing three of him, two of him. That's about it, really. You only really need only the two flare flare dragons. That's about it, really. Uh, but nonetheless, less these guys are really great for. All your graveyard setups, your sub plays for rank seven C's plays, fusion plays, and just all around give you a potential possibility of control the field with certain plays here and there. Nonetheless, these guys are still great, and even till this day, Rise Black Dragon, thank, especially thanks to new support, Rise Black Dragon is still a fearful card out of certain decks. Now, obviously not compared to the most competitive decks like Pepe, Monarchs, uh, Cosmos, etc. Such, but again, car. Again, it is still a fun deck to play, and you can still do some really fun plays with just these guys alone. Which is really impressive, to actually. Say. And then next up, uh, let's get the since we did talk about vanilla, let's get the last vanilla out of the way real quick. Uh, not counting Kinky Bayou, the only non-dragon I'm playing this whole entire deck is the one Summon Skull. Now I cut Summon Skull down from two to one because there has been a lot of plays where I have been dead drawing this this sucker right here and it has been ruining a lot of my hands and it's been ruining a lot of my plays. So by cutting down the Summon Skull down to one, I decrease the amount of chances where I have the Summon Skull in my hand as much as possible and, at least, and honestly... Yes, I do see the Summon Skull in my hand every now and then, despite seeing them as one. But it's definitely better than seeing two Summon Skulls in your hand. Hand like I speak for a lot of die-hard Raz players, especially for the ones who are playing the current new Raz build. When I say top decking into a Summon Skull is one of the worst things any Red Eyes deck can go through, and it is terrible top decking this guy. So by playing at one, I decreases the chances amount of times, and he still becomes just as reliable as great. And 
usually most of the time you really need only the one rise fusion but in case if you do need it again you do have return red eyes etc etc that can bring them right back so you can reuse use them as a fusion material all over again so yeah and uh, that's it for the vanilla engine now for the rest of the effect monsters we still play the three blackstone legends very important that we we bring out our rise black dragons from our deck to field as fast as possible we can the faster we get these these dudes on board the faster and easier we can do our plays so it's very important we get our black stones and what's really great about black stones is they recycle themselves by bouncing a rise from graveyard a little some low rise from from your grave back to your deck so you get these guys to your hand so it gives you stuff for like your rise fusion play so, so let's say for example all three of your vanilla rides are in your graveyard, no problem. And you have some skull in your, in your deck, and you have a rise fusion sent in your hand, and you have no way to play it, no problem. Just use Blackstone's effect, put the rise back in your hand, put this, I'm sorry, back to your deck, put this card back to your hand, and then you can be able to proceed with playing your rise fusion, bring out your arch fusion, black skull dragon, like nothing happened. Also, it almost turns a dragon shrine into a rota for this guy. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. So you can just pretty much play Dragon Shrine, send off Rise Black Dragon or Rise Black Flare Dragon to the graveyard and along with this guy. Then use the guy's effect, recycle them back to your back to the deck, get this guy back your hand, and be ready to use the guy next turn and just proceed with other plays you would like to do from there. So yeah. Blackstone is kind of a unique tool for this deck right here. And next up, we're still playing the three black metal dragons. Still a real nice guy. Um uh, Quick them from your hand or your side field to another rise monster you control, and that rise monster becomes gain six star attack. Uh, turns your rise black dragons and, and your black flare dragons, of uh, yeah, black flare dragons into pretty much mini blue eyes white dragons. Uh, turns your turns your rise black dark red men's into something that can run over a black skull dragon, which is insane. And even and even do some of the same thing with your flare metal dragons as well. And not only for that, but more importantly, what he's mostly in there for is any time this dude is set from the field to the graveyard yard if that means by any way as long as he was originally on the field before he sent the graveyard you can add any card from your deck to your hand that has the word red eyes sadly you can't search for this card but you can get out uh, your these cards right or you can get your uh card to redstone which kind of sucks right there but you can get your Rise Black Dragons, as I was saying earlier. You can get your Red Mans, get your Rise Fusions, get your Tracer Dragons, which helps Red Eyes Wyverns. And you can also use this card to get your certain important traps, like Rise Spirit and Red Eyes, a uh, Return of Rise, which is all very important utilities for this deck nonetheless. So, three Black Stones, still a very great, useful card. Uh, one Red Man, it's Red Man. I don't think I really need to explain why this bad boy is so good. Next up, I played two copies of card I recently picked up, and I asked, uh, two Red Eyes Tracer Dragons. This Retro Dragon, pardon me. Wow, I'm used to have his original name before the change of name. Anyways, Retro Dragon is a fun and awesome card to play, especially knowing the fact that he allows you combo with certain plays. Uh, he's a new card. Uh, for those of you who do not know what he does, uh, he has two effects. Uh, the first effect isn't really that needed. It's okay. Uh, I believe the first effect goes by you can trigger this guy off to make it make additional normal summon of a rise monster. That mo that effect isn't really needed. It's there just in case, but again, it's never needed. But the second effect is what makes him good. Uh, his second effect is when a rise monster or monsters you control is destroyed instead of the graveyard, special summon this card from hand defense position and bring back all those monsters back from ritual defense. So, let's say for example you have. Your two rise black dragons in field. You made a mistake. Well, sort of make a speak mistake. You make a play where you special summon your third rise black dragon. Your opponent plays torrential tribute. No problem. This guy's effect goes off. He fall and not only you bring him off your hand to field defense, but his effect goes comes, goes off as well. And you get these three guys out of nowhere. And, and also at the same time, you can also make a chain link play with. If my ruling is correct, don't give me a word for it. You could also potentially make a chain link play where you can get out a keeper from hand or graveyard as well. And keeper also has the additional effect where if he's special summoned by this way, you can add a, if I remember correctly, I think, I think any or just a one of Pacific monster. You can add one dragon type normal. No, any dragon type normal monster. So let's say you have a random flare dragon in your graveyard that you don't that you that you do not mind going back to hand. Say you need a pitch for cards or redstone. He goes off, get your cans. 
and you pretty much make some big pluses, give yourself some access to a lot of seeds and secret plays. So, uh, yeah, just looking at that right there, you can tell right out of the bat that Retro Dragon is just a really fun card. And as I also mentioned, uh, he's a level 4 monster, so when you bring him out, rate 4 seeds plays. And even if you can't find his effect useful, he's a level 4 monster that can be normal summon with no problem. So, worst case scenario, you banish him for Redman plays. And also, another thing I really love about him the most, just in case, ignoring his effects, is he's a red eyes monster that can be normal summon, meaning you can have access to your return of red eyes if you need your return of red eyes as soon as possible. So, yeah, Retro Dragon definitely has some great utility for this deck right here. I'm very glad I picked him up when I did. Next up, two Keeper Shrines. Uh, I think we all know what Keeper does. Uh, he's pretty much Tone Dragon's big brother. Uh, allows you to get your red eyes a lot easier out. He comes right out every time your dragon's destroyed. If you pretend you were second like normal monsters, uh, access rate four exceeds play. He's just great. Wow, did I just say no? Exp did I just give us some explanation when I just said no explanation? Huh, that's weird of me. Uh, I cut down this card to down with one copy instead of two, from two to one, because he hasn't really been as neat as he used to be, but I still find him as a valuable card for this deck right here. And as one copy Rise Wyvern, always a great card for another Redman Revival plays, uh, followed by by another monster, make your Rise plays as well. Now, and also use guys back to bring back a uh, Rise Black Dragon or a Rise Flare of Metal Dragon, or, well, that too, but Rise Black Flare Dragon if you need that effect as well. And of course, as I kept on mentioning, Rank 4 Exceeds plays, Rise Monster you can normal summon so you can have access to your return of Rise a lot easier. And, like a Retro Dragon, if you have Redman in your hand, you can banish this guy off. Bring your red men from there. So, Wyvern is not as good as he used to be in this deck, but he is still a great card you can, you can uh, mix some utility with. And lastly, the only, the last monster tire, the last monster tire monster lineup, as I said with Summon Skull, him and Summon in this card here are the only two non dragons in the entire deck. And that is, uh, King of Bayou. Uh, just bring back either your Black Metal Dragons or your Blackstone Legends, so you can just, re so you can keep on constantly make some great, nice plays with them constantly. Oh yeah, oh yeah, all that great such. And that's it for the monster lineup. Now for spells. For spells, we play three three red eyes fusions. Uh, fusions. Uh, I played three just so I can have the most, best easier access to seeing them as much as possible as we can. And there are people who are fast to negate this card with certain effects in particular and stop this card from going off. So in case you can get the first one off, no problem. You got the other two back it up. And really, with the way how Yu-Gi-Oh is, as I said, you really only need one black uh, red archfiend, black skull dragon. But again, you never know, you know, because again, the negation and having one on one archfiend black skull dragon is always fun, and I have proven that time and time again. Three cards are red stones, so you can discard your extra red eyes, so you can have access to easier, easier access to draw your cards and such. And partial foolish burial as well. Speaking of foolish burial. Two Dragon Shrines, uh, as I explained earlier, well, what's up, great about this card, all that great little bull such. And the next set for the staple stuff, at least in my opinion, these staple, staple stuff, uh, three Twin Twisters, Pendulum Hate, Back Row Hate, Hate Hate, all that typical such. So, Twin Twisters have been very grateful, not only for that, but also with the ability where you discard a card as a cause to activate this card. Definitely helps us deck a lot, a lot out a bit. Because it is a deck that relies on graveyard a bit, so not only you take care of problems, problems that you deal with, but you're also sending stuff in graveyard where you can make some good plays or to that as well. And the last spell, the spell lineup, one one for one, so we can bring out our black stones and black metal dragons a lot easier, all that fun such. And that's it for the spells. The traps we're playing two return red eyes, probably one of the best support red eyes cards we've ever gotten in a long time. Ignoring red men, which is a really great card. Uh, you only have to activate this card, card only when you control a red eyes monster. And whenever you, its first effect is you can bring back a normal monster. So that means your red black dragon, red eyes black fl metal flare dragon, or even worst case scenario, your summon skull as well. If you find opportunities, make more fusion plays as well. And also, what's also great about this card is if your opponent makes a mistake and destroys this card, boom, free red men out of nowhere, which is always fun to do with this card. And uh, I chose this card over. Ah, excuse me. I chose this card over Call of Haunted because I find this card be a lot more utilitable with Call of Haunted. Uh, what I like with this card, at least in this deck wise, at least, uh, what I like about this card over Call of Haunted this deck right here is it's such a blowout black metal dragon. 
Uh, all I call the haunted, haunted, it's not a continuous card face up where it says it feels, so your opponent can't stop it with MST or Twin Twister. And also, this deck is obviously red as focus, so obviously you're going to use this card to bring back either Red Man uh, or your one of your Rise monsters, and you're going to make some rank, C's play, rank 7 C's plays, Red Eyes plays, and Dragon Span plays all day long. And yeah, if this was not a Rise dedicated deck, obviously I would be playing Call of Haunt over this card. But this is a Rise focus card, so or deck, pardon me. So we we definitely need this card more than Call of Haunt. At least in my perspective. Uh, this is supposed to be the three Psalm Strikes I borrowed for quite a while. Uh, just imagine the three Psalm Strikes. Psalm Strikes, a uh, very useful card. No explanation needed with Psalm Strikes. And then for the last two traps, one warning and fans of Dinus. More pendulum hate, more pendulum hate, uh, more big monster hate, more hate of a certain I don't want to deal with, all that great such. And that is it for the main deck right there. Now for the extra deck. For the extra deck right here, we still play the three Black Skull, not Archfiend, Black Skull Dragons. Now you probably don't really need that many Archfiends. You could probably get away playing this deck with only one or even two or even just one of these guys, and that's about it really. Uh, I played three of them just in case because you never know when you come to a weird odd situation where you end up getting all three of your Rise Fusions off going off, off in the same duel. You never know when something like that happens and when that happens, boom, you got all the three, all three of these guys ready to uh, make your opponent ha have a bad day when something like that comes up. Now for the Seize Monsters, uh, there's no Synchros because I, I took out the Tuners because I felt like Tuners were not really necessary in this deck no more. So I make this deck a little, a little bit more Xyz based than it used to be, and cut out the synchros for now. Uh, for the Xyz monsters, we're still playing the three Red Eyes, Flare, Metal Dragons. No explanation needed with this bad boy. And then next up, two Drago Sacks, uh, two big eyes. I did order. I don't have a second big eye yet, but I did recently order it, and probably within a few weeks after about the time this video is being uploaded, you will probably see a big eye in this deck right here. But for right now, I'm only having one big eye. And yeah, it's just like the Psalm Strikes, I did borrow the, the big guy for a little bit. And finally, for last of the Rank 7 engine, the one Gaia, just in case if I need to go for some pure damage stuff. All that great stuff. So, those are my Rank 7s. And all I'm playing for Rank 4s is just typical stuff. Uh, one Queen Dragoon, one 101, one Castell, and one Abyss Drill. Nothing really too special with the Rank 4s. Uh, I wanted to play a rank 1 here and there, there, but I couldn't really find room, and there wasn't really too many rank 1s that, that really caught my interest, and honestly, most of the times where I had the opportunity to go for rank 1s, I just felt like it wasn't really that really necessary. I felt like there was a lot of plays where when I had the opportunity to go for rank 1, it felt kind of only really unnecessary, and I just went straight forward for the rise plays, and normally the rise plays are normally better than rank 1 plays. At least that's how I see it right now. And, uh, yeah, Dragoons, that right there was my current Red Eyes, Red Eyes deck profile file for March 2016. More like a deck update. I should be saying deck update. I'm, I'm just saying profile. I'm just saying pro. But, yeah, that's what I'm just saying. I'm just saying profile when I should, when around times like this, I should be saying deck update. But I think Dragoons will get my picture, especially when you see the title of the video and such. So, that's my Red Eyes deck update right there, Dragoons. Uh, there will be a couple of changes that will happen after the next ban list, especially depending on what the ban list is. But nonetheless, regardless, it's still a fun deck, and if you have the right budget for it, Blackstone Legend is dropping down on price, uh, Archfiend is dropping down on price, and I've heard Flare Middle Dragon is dropping down on price as well. So eventually down the road, uh, a Red Eyes deck should be pretty cheap to, cheap to pick up, especially if you're a casual player. So if you're a casual player and you're looking for some Red Eyes fun, this is a fun deck. I definitely recommend playing this deck, deck. But if you're really on a tight budget, I might you might either be better off of playing either the upcoming Revival Dragon Structure deck that's coming, or if you're Dragons you want, I'll do a Rising Dragons, another reboot version, where I showcase a Rising Dragons of Chaos Dragons or Heritage, whatever you Dragons prefer the most. Safe. So, with that being said, let me know what Dragoons think about this deck profile in the comment section down below. And I will see Dragoons around. Hope you Dragoons enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and a favorite if you did and share this video with other people. It really helps me out a lot. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Subscribe today. Come part of the Dragon Legion Alliance. And I will see Dragoons another day.
Christian Yagoon, signing out. Peace.